you very much for the uh, invitation to uh, speak here. I'm going to focus on, uh, you heard from previous speakers, some of the risk factors uh, and the impact they have. The question is, what can we do about it? If we begin to develop guidelines, uh, is there a way that we can apply evidence and improve uh, the uh, picture that we have right now? In the United States, we heard this referred to the Institute of Medicine report, uh, which came out at the turn of the century, uh, has really driven a lot of our strategies in healthcare. Um, this actually uh, surprised me and made me a little angry when it came out. It said, in its current form, habits, and environment, American healthcare is incapable of providing the public with the quality of health care it expects and deserve. And went on to say that decision making uh, is based too much on what we learned when we were in medical school and what we thought were. But we needed to really focus on evidence. And so there's been a, a major shift in the United <coughs> States to finding out what is the evidence and then how can we apply it. Well, as I said, uh, when I read this, uh, I didn't like it. I didn't believe it. Uh, so I launched a study. We launched a study to look at whether this was true. And unfortunately, we had to uh, present this at our uh, sessions. Uh, and in fact, the Institute of Medicine was right. Uh, if you look at therapies that are largely available in generic form, they're not expensive. It can significantly reduce the uh, rate of five-year cardiovascular events from around 20% to none down to somewhere around 5%, only 50% uh, at best. More than half of all heart disease and stroke patients at that point in time were leaving hospitals without receiving these therapies. So we were not using the evidence that we had to treat our patients and achieve optimal outcomes. That then resulted in a major focus uh, by the American Heart Association on developing guideline programs. The uh, title is Get With the Guidelines, to really uh, get these guidelines applied. And we have them in atrial fib, heart failure, stroke, uh, and a whole number of different uh, guidelines to treat primary symptoms. What basically they do is to take recommendations that are very high quality of evidence, and strongly recommended, and apply them in clinical practice. And in doing so, we need to understand the hospitals and the systems that we work in, uh, because there can be inefficiency in those settings. The orders don't get written, the patients don't understand. Uh, and so the focus of the quality improvement uh, in this particular instance is really on uh, the hospitals uh, and on applying and developing teams. That's very important. And so it takes more than just a doctor. We have a very strong involvement of nurses and pharmacists. Even the hospital administrators need to support these activities. Um, and uh, cardiac rehab when the patient leaves the hospital is important. We're seeing now a major push in cardiac rehab in China. Uh, they're getting those facilities going. What we've been able to show uh, is that the more likely uh, a guideline is to be applied, and you know, let's say here it's less than 65%, of the guidelines recommended, the hospital mortality was up over 5%. You get up to 80% of guideline recommendations applied, we see the hospital mortality dropping. So the broader use of recommended therapies has been associated with the reduction in hospital mortality. It, it uh, seems to work. At the same time that this has been going on in the United States, in the same period of time, we have seen roughly a 30% reduction in uh, post-30-day mortality for myocardial infarction, 16% or so in heart failure, and 5% in stroke. So at a time when the mortality is increasing, 
than other parts of the world. In the United States, the mortality has gone down, and it's gone down in association with the use of quality improvement programs. And that's why the ministries of health in China, in Brazil, in Dubai, are very interested in applying these programs. And you will see in China the use, there are now, I'll tell you in a minute, roughly 150 hospitals in the program that American Heart is collaborating on in China. Uh, right now in the United States, since 2000, this is when that statement came out that made me so angry about uh, we're not doing things right, and patients look at the treatment. Since then, we have over 2,100 hospitals in the United States that are involved in quality improvement programs, over 6 million patient records, uh, and we recognize these hospitals, just like we're doing in China. Hospitals in China that are doing quality improvement are getting recognized, they're being uh, written about in the press, at the meetings of the, the cardiac, the Chinese Society of Cardiology. The same thing is beginning to happen here. Over 1,300 hospitals recognized in the United States, and more than 300 articles written. So if you're interested in patient care, you can make patients better. If you're interested in writing articles, you can certainly find a lot to write about in these quality improvement programs. In the United States, it's a map of the United States a little bit compressed, uh, almost 80% of our population lives near hospitals that are involved in quality improvement programs. The little dots are locations of the hospitals, and you can see a clustering along the east coast and west coast uh, in the United States. And people like to live near the water. Even in China, you find a clustering of the population in the eastern part. Uh, but almost 80 percent of our population lives uh, near a hospital uh, where the patients go in and they will have a uh, quality improvement program that uh, helps with their care. The other thing about these programs, which, which, uh, which I like, is that as a change in guidelines occurs, as we get a new medication, we can, if the program is there, we can see a very rapid implementation of medicine. This is an example when clopidogrel came out. Uh, you can see within the publication of CURE, which was the uh, journal article, a study that looked at clopidogrel uh, and its uh, benefits in acute coronary syndrome. Soon after that, in a hospital that was involved in quality improvement, Within roughly uh, half a year, 80% of the patients were receiving the medication. So if a new medication comes out in China that you want to use, and you have quality improvement going on, you can easily change the metric and get that, that medication uh, used. Here is an example of uh, the use of a medication for heart failure uh, in the uh, United States. The, the new uh, army uh, medications uh, are being used, uh, and you can see uh, the very their implementation uh, is increasing over uh, a couple of years. So it's slower than what we saw with the pedagogy, but again, in quality improvement programs, it seems to work. The other thing that we can use from learn from the quality improvement programs, and I will show you this in China in just a minute, is that it's not the same around a country when you start to look. Here we see in the dark blue uh, states in the United States where the use of a particular medication, in this case they're looking at heart failure, and they're using whether patients got ACE or our medication. And we find out that certain states that are in gold do a really good job. Ohio. Cleveland Clinic is there. You know, other states uh, in uh, uh, sort of are in between all the light blue are states that are not doing quite as well. And unfortunately, when this was done, uh, North Carolina, where the uh, University of North Carolina exists, uh, was not doing as well. And then finally, the blue states 
uh, the Mayo Clinic is up here in Minnesota. And the blue states are the ones where they're less likely to be used. And uh, my gosh, my alma mater, Brigham Hospital up here in Massachusetts. So you can, you can begin to look and see that the use of medications varies and ask the question why. Why is it that doctors in one state are more likely to use it than others? Do they read different medical journals? Is there a problem with the way the patients take the medication? What's going on? And that helps structure the improvement in uh, healthcare. Now, I want to also call your attention to the composite uh, rate, because I'm going to show you uh, these values for China in a minute. The closer this composite is to 100, the better you're doing. Here's another example of what we can uh, learn from the studies. This looks at what's known as, and this on the left, the risk treatment mismatch, the paradox. And that is, the sicker a patient tends to be, the less likely they are to get the medical therapy. It's exactly opposite of what we would expect. The use of ACE inhibitors, for instance, uh, or ARBs or beta blockers being lower uh, in uh, groups where the patients are sicker. And also differences in uh, the gender and the ethnicities occurring. And what we see with, with the guideline related uh, program quality improvement is that where quality improvement programs exist, they tend to, to even this out. We begin to see patients being treated more equally than the same as women, uh, and we also begin to see medication <coughs> being used uh, more consistently. So overall, the quality improvement program with American Heart and with the guidelines is a national initiative that involves collaboration with development of teams, reviewing what's going on on a monthly basis, and making changes so that patients really get the medications they require. And we have patient management tools, which are very useful. We've developed them in China. Now a word about China. We have in China what's known as the Triple C program. Triple because it is three C's. Improving care, cardiovascular disease in China. So we call it the Triple C program. And I'll tell you a little bit about what's going on. Been doing this since uh, early 2014. We have a, a senior management group. This is SMG. Senior management group meets. Uh, we initially started off with acute coronary syndromes, ACS, and then we added atrial fibrillation. And if you look at the numbers as of July, uh, we were close to 100,000 patients in China. A very quick implementation. Uh, twice as many patients with acute coronary syndrome as atrial fibrillation. And the uh, development of this has included a, a triple C website, electronic data. We use WeChat. WeChat is being used in this quality improvement to communicate with patients, for investigators to talk with each other. Very important is the monthly feedback. The hospitals find out how well they're doing. And monthly feedback is right here. They get information every month about whether patients are getting the right medication. There's a website. This is a website for the Triple C program. You can log on to uh, for information. There have been publications now that are coming out, abstracts uh, in upcoming meetings. So we're beginning to see the same type of activity in China that we had uh, in the United States in terms of the development and writing uh, articles. The structure of the program in China uh, is uh, such that almost all of the provinces and autonomous regions have at least one hospital uh, in participating. Now, once again in China, you can see a clustering of the hospitals along the uh, east coast here, closer to the ocean, you know, where the populations live in some much better area in terms of growing crops, not quite as uh, arid as it is uh, in the uh, west, in Xinjiang. And we also are looking at uh, the representation. These have been, up to this point, 
uh, mostly tertiary hospitals, but secondary hospitals are uh, getting into it, and uh, look at how well the various economic levels are represented. The Ministry of Health is very interested in what's happening here. These are data from the acute coronary syndrome patients. You can see the majority of them uh, are, are men, uh, and they tend to be young. And we learned from this work that in China, you're more likely to see a STEMI, the, the big heart attack. In the United States, we're more likely to see the non-STEMI. So there's an interesting evolution that occurs, uh, and uh, not sure exactly why that is, but the patients are on, more likely to be on aspirin and statins in the United States and that tends to modify things. Uh, but in China, you're more likely to see a younger patient with a big dystemic. Now, here are the data that, that I want you to think about. The acute coronary syndrome, uh, here's the map of China. And just like the United States, it's not all the same. And the uh, dark green would be the best. And there's nowhere in China, nobody has a dark green. Green. But we find in certain areas you're more likely to see a high level of implementation than uh, in others. Uh, in Mongolia, these areas are not uh, as likely up in parts of uh, Bombay. Out uh, here in uh, Xinjiang, it was a real surprise. Urumqi, what's going on out there? I, just, I did not expect it to be this way. They're very good. In one of the four top places, Sichuan, doing well. Shanghai, looking strong. Now, when the people up in Beijing saw what was going on down in Shanghai, you know, that got their attention because Beijing does not like to fall behind Shanghai in anything. So you can begin to see how hospitals look at each other and understand how they need to do a, a better job. Now notice that the composite measure overall for China is a little bit to the left than what we saw in that other slide. And then you want to move this over to the right. Another very interesting thing we've learned about is, is just the way hospitals work. And in looking at hospitals that are doing well, we found out that those hospitals that downloaded the data monthly, that met monthly, that went over things, are much more likely to do well than those that didn't always look at what came across on the website. So having the team meet monthly is very, very important. Act on it and review what's going on. Now here's atrial fibrillation. I said about 30,000 cases. Uh, and you can see the distribution uh, for uh, uh, atrial fibrillation in half of China. And you can see slightly different now. Uh, Xinjiang is no longer out there with the green. Uh, Shanghai has lost its green. We have a clustering uh, down in this area. The bay, uh, which was uh, up higher, is down in the lower area. And there's a real shift the nature of the relation over to the left. This seems to be powered mainly by a lack of anticoagulation, a lack of a focus on assessing risk for anticoagulation. These are very important data for the Ministry of Health and for the Chinese Society of Cardiology when they want to have educational programs. They can look at maps like this and see where they need to have the greatest focus. Again, the groups that are downloading the information are doing better, and a lot of awards are going out to hospitals. These show you the words for acute uh, coronary syndrome, 2016 atrial fibrillation, recognized with plaques, reported in the newspapers located. Now, I think when I was president of American Heart, I made this point that uh, I did not believe that we were going to really accomplish what we needed to uh, without a team approach and without a, a greater involvement of nurses. It just does not happen uh, unless we work together as a team. Urge the uh, Heart Association, others in the United States, to look at the results of an early study from Stanford, multi-fit, and begin to look at forming teams. So we have a major focus now on how we can get nurses more involved and in looking at outpatient involvement of nurses in secondary prevention 
I'll show you quickly what's going in Brazil. 17 or so sites in Brazil. They're focusing on atrial fib, congestive heart failure, and acute coronary syndrome, beginning to ramp up and look at how the care is given there. So now another large country. And then finally, the Middle East just starting up with heart failure uh, in uh, uh, United Arab Emirates uh, and Saudi Arabia. And so this will be coming up later this year. So now we have people around the world really getting involved in quality improvement. And to conclude, it's very important to have the accurate data, to have leadership uh, from uh, an individual or physician uh, or someone who really is going to push the programs, know your goals, the administrators are important, get the nurses involved. If you do that, you will see some nice things happening for patients. And it's, it's really been a pleasure for me to, to be able to come to China and see how well get to the guidelines is going here. Uh, and soon, we hope to see programs in uh, stroke uh, starting up, and, and hopefully we may have one in heart failure. So I think we'll see an expansion of programs in China. China does it very well when they get these projects done. Uh, thank you very much for your attention.